All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? All right. Let me just do a quick refresher on my screen at home just to make sure it's coming up correctly. Hopefully today there will not be any technical issues. That would be beautiful. All right. Okay. So let's get started. This is Paint with Lovejoy and we are painting a Mayan pyramid today. And what you see is we've got our colors here for today. We are using brushes. Um, I'm on an eight by 10 canvas panel, so it's a little bit um, on the flat side. Some of you may be painting on a stretched canvas, so there's gonna be a little bit of width on the side. Um, doesn't matter which one you paint on or if you're painting on paper. So we have our composition already on the canvas and you've got two options to get this on your canvas at home. First option is you can pause the video draw what you see, and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or in the description box below, there is a link to what I call a traceable. You can purchase the traceable, download it, print it out, and then with carbon paper, you transfer it to your surface. And a quick note with the carbon paper, it's actually gonna be a really light line that makes it quite easy to paint over. I went over my traceable lines with Sharpie marker for you guys at home that are gonna pause the video and draw what you see. Um, so that way it shows up a little bit brighter. So if you're doing the traceable, don't feel like you have to do the Sharpie marker on top of it. And the traceable is a nice way for my first time and beginner painters to get your initial composition on your canvas, not have to stress about drawing, and then you can jump in and focus on painting. So let's see, if you guys have any questions today, please feel free to leave a comment in the chat and I will address it while I'm uh, painting. And hi Denise and Photography Queen, hope you guys are both having a great day. So for the painting today, um, we're going to do a blue background, and it's a pretty intense blue, kind of like the, uh, uh, the lighthouse painting we did a couple uh, days ago. Then our pyramid is going to be our raw sienna with a little bit of yellow, so we're going to work on like a warm highlight here, and then we'll put this, we'll consider this more of a cool shadow with our tan and our black. So we'll talk a little bit about warm cool today. And then we've got our nice kind of base green grass. So to get started, we are going to start with the sky and then we'll work our way down. So I'm going to start with a medium blue. So I'm going to start pulling the white aside. I had a little bit of blue on my brush. And then we're going to start pulling some blue in here. And you can go to whatever shade of blue that you want. If you want something lighter, if you want sunset colors, if you want a pink sky, you have full permission on this video and any video that I teach or have on my channel to deviate and make it your own. So as you're filling in your background, try a few different brush strokes. We got our full width of a brush stroke. Take that brush, turn it sideways, a little bit skinnier line. And then the ultimate favorite one is literally slapping your brush on the canvas. This is called cross hatching. Uh, we call it X marks um, and slapping your paint, your brush on the canvas in this demo. So basically we're gonna be going from the edges of our pyramid to the edges of our canvas. And if you are on a stretched canvas, continue that color around the side of the canvas. And that way it looks really nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. Now, as you're filling in your background, if you have to mix your back color two, three, four times, don't stress on getting the exact same shade every time. A little variety is to your benefit. And once we fill in this space, I'll demonstrate a wet on wet blending method that you can change the shade of your background with. All right, it looks like we got a few more people jumping on. Hi, Jen and Tammy and Gwen. Awesome. And Gwen, glad you're watching on the phone. Might be easier to paint on a wider screen, but still love that you're uh, checking out the video and hanging out and made it for the live version too. So I really appreciate you guys uh, making the effort to be here during the live uh, uh, filming and asking the questions. Really appreciate that support. So thanks. All right. So as you're in the beginning stages of painting, um, you may find mixing your colors a little frustrating because, you know, it can be kind of hard to get that same shade. So be kind to yourself. Your brain's taking in a lot of information. Your, each time you mix paint, each time you apply paint, your brain's taking in a bunch of information um, and just getting more and more comfortable with it. So a lot of stuff that you learn in your beginning phases of painting will make so much more sense 
the next time that you paint and a year from now when you paint. Um, you're constantly building on your own knowledge. So again, just be kind to yourself as you're in the beginning stages of learning something new, whether it's art or something else. You know, anytime you start a new job, the first two weeks are intense because you're taking in so much information of how the company works, how you work with the other coworkers, and just kind of leveling into, you know, whatever the environment is that you're now working with. So painting's a similar concept, so be kind to yourself as you're in the beginning stages. And try to let that kindness carry over into other aspects of your life. We are way too hard on ourselves as individuals. And I'm speaking definitely from personal experience on that one. Okay, so we've got our base color on here. If you want an area that's a little bit darker, and I'm gonna go a little darker on the top. Um, I'm actually grabbing just that direct blue. We're literally just gonna slap it on there. And then I usually like to wipe off any excess paint and then go back to where I slapped that color and then just light pressure, you're literally smooshing it into that medium blue color. Um, and this is called wet on wet blending, but sometimes it's just very therapeutic to say, I'm smooshing paint, I'm slapping paint. Um, use whatever adjective that makes your creative process more entertaining. If you want a spot that's a little bit darker, you can do the reverse. You can add your white, slap that on there. You will notice that your lighter colors are going to diffuse and get eaten up so much quicker in your um, mixture, your medium blue or whatever color it may be. So you'll want to move your brush a little less if you want a bit more of a distinct lightness. And your wet on wet blending gets more and more comfortable with more and more practice of painting. So have fun with it. If you feel like finger painting while you're doing this, that's always fun too. And the more you move your brush, the more the two kind of blend together. So if you're wanting an area that's a little bit darker, maybe throw it back on there, but don't move your brush as much. And same with the lighter areas. So do everything that you want to your background now while it's wet. A few more light spaces. And then we'll move into, let's see, we'll do the pyramid first. We'll just actually work our way down. We'll do the pyramid and then the grass will be one of our last steps. And as you're doing this, if you kind of happen to overlap your blue on the inside, I'm going to do it on purpose a few times, just so I can show how you literally just paint over it. And sometimes doing that overlapping helps continue that brush stroke. So if you were painting with a lot more time and it wasn't a, you know, a demo under 30 minutes, under 40 minutes, you, I'd actually paint this whole thing, not even have the pyramid on there and paint my whole background let it dry, and then I'd put the pyramid back on top of that with thicker paint. And I would be using artist grade paint for that too, just due to um, the transparency of student grade paint. Okay, so background looks good. Do whatever you want to your background. And then you are gonna clean your brush really good. I'm actually gonna grab a clean brush and we're gonna be moving into our pyramid. And we're gonna, our sun's coming from the right-hand side, so the front, the face of the pyramid, is in kind of a bit of a warm, raw sienna. And then this would be the shadow, so that's gonna be a bit of a cool, raw sienna. So as you start looking at things in life, as you, because we've talked about our value scale in some of the other demos, and the value scale is your light color, your medium color, and then your dark color. So if you can start noticing that for your light color, if it's warm, kind of a yellowish hint, or if it's cool to where it's got a bit more of, not necessarily a bluish tint, but it's cooler and pushes back. Um, so the more that you dive into painting, the more concepts and theories you are going to learn. So we're gonna start with our shadow side first. And I'm gonna pull some of that raw sienna side, and that's actually a little darker than I want it to be. So I'm gonna take some white, and we're going about two parts raw sienna to one part white. Basically just toning it down and we'll use a good amount of this color. So I just made a, uh, a decent amount and then we're going to add the shadow side as a perimeter mixing. So kind of taking some of this color for our shadow side, I'm going to take a little bit of black and a little bit of black goes a long way in our shading. So I like to kind of push it on the edge, leave what's left on my brush 
And then I start mixing on the perimeter and pulling this color in to get to the shade that I'm looking for. And basically just kind of looking for a dirty brown and there was quite a bit of black still left on my brush. So I'm gonna add some more raw sienna. And by adding the black, it is cooler black. So it's gonna, the cool shadows kind of push backwards and the warm highlights pull forward. Okay, so as we get into smaller spaces, I'm gonna jump down to the small pointy brush because we've got a, quite a few little sections here. So let's start, we'll grab our paint here and we'll start on these little corners, these little triangles. And I'm actually gonna apply my paint pretty thick because my stone grade paint is on the transparent side. And you've got options if you're using transparent and student grade paint. Um, you can apply your paint a little bit thicker and you get a bit more opaque coverage or apply one coat, let it dry, and then apply a second coat. So there's nothing wrong with having to adjust and adapt based on the variables that your tools and your environment are giving you. Okay, so as you're filling in these triangles, um, play with the pressure of your brush. If you need to kind of put your pinky out, rest your, uh, put your pinky out and use that as your pivot point or rest your forearm against the edge of the table, that will help. All right, and now we're gonna add a touch more black to this, go a little bit darker. And we're gonna just kind of jump back and forth between a dark and a light. So the dark brown that you were just using, we're adding a touch more black to it. And we're gonna fill in kind of this strip on the side. And again, I'm gonna make more because I do have the blue underneath. White. So I need to apply this a little bit thicker to compensate for that. And again, as you're using the brush, the pointy brush, play with the pressure. More pressure is gonna make a whiter brush stroke light pressure makes a smaller brush stroke. And all you're doing is just getting comfortable with holding the tools in your hand, um, the pressure with your muscles. And it is pretty amazing when you do have a painting that you struggle with and then you paint again, how much easier it is and how much you learn and just that little bit of time in between the not so fun painting and a good painting. Um, that's where a lot of your skills will show up. Okay, so. Let's see, let's go, we're gonna go a touch darker for this um, kind of the side of the stairs and then we'll go a little bit lighter as we get into here and then we'll start doing some raw sienna and yellow for this section. Okay, so a little bit darker. And if you're already pretty dark with your brown and you need to be using just the direct black, go right ahead and do that. Um, whoa, way too much black, way too much. All right, so make a new pile. If that happens to you, and it, it happens a lot in the beginning stages, just make a new pile, that perimeter mixing, and start pulling that color into it as needed. Don't freak out, it's never the end of the world. Um, one of my favorite art teachers was very inspired when I was younger, Bob Ross. Happy accidents, learn to embrace your happy accidents. And you may notice as you apply your color on here, you go, you know what, that's not dark enough. That is totally okay um, if you change your color, need to change your color after you apply it to the canvas. Um, what you're witnessing, there we go. See, so that original super darkness that I had was what I actually needed. So what you're witnessing when that happens is what we call color theory. We interpret our colors based on the color next to it. So we may mix a color on our plate and it looks, you know, maybe exactly what we need, but then as soon as we put it on our canvas and it's next to our other colors on here, um, we interpret it a little differently. So totally okay to change your color if you need to after you've applied it to your canvas. And that's really a core concept of art. You do have to adjust apply based on what you're seeing, what's next to it. Um, and that's why I say there's no exact formula for uh, painting. Okay, so we're actually gonna take this dark color, I'm gonna place it on the top of this pyramid here. So we're gonna fill in this box. And again, remember to breathe. If you find that you're shaky as you're applying the paint, um, that means you're holding your breath. So take a big inhale or um, 
exhale as you touch the canvas, then you'll be a little less shaky. Okay, so now we're gonna go a little bit lighter and I'm gonna keep with the small pointy brush. So now I'm gonna start going to this side, mix this again. Um, it was the raw sienna, about two parts raw sienna, one part white. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit more um, just to talk you through it. So that's closer with a little bit of yellow to what we need at the front. So we still need a little touch of kind of the dirty brown in there, but we're not going um, as light or I mean as dark as what we've put on here. We're going a little bit lighter. So this is looks pretty close, but again, we'll notice a little bit more as I apply it. Yeah, that will work. So again, this one's a little bit lighter, not as dark as our shadows that we put over here. There we go. And be very careful as you're coming up next to um, kind of the stair step design because that's darker paint. Um, if you get a little bit of that paint that's going to smush into the lighter paint, it will kind of change and affect the color. That wet on wet blending concept will happen. Um, you've got two options if, if you end up getting that in there. One, you can either wipe it off with a paper towel and then reapply your color, or um, put it into a happy accident and blend that color into it and then go back and apply more of it. So you'll find your own balance with your happy accidents in painting. And hopefully you find them uh, in life as well. All right. Okay, so while that's wet, we're actually going to do a few things. Let me throw that in there. Um, so I'm going to clean up brush or just wipe off that excess paint. Now I'm going to come back to that dark brown. And mine's starting to dry, so if you have to make it again, um, raw sienna with a little touch of black. And then we're gonna give some indication of where those stairs are. So those little lines that were on the traceable, we're just gonna go right on top of that. So you can either reference that traceable or strengthen your power of observation as you look and see where I'm placing these. And because it's wet on wet, paint um, and transparent. Each brush stroke I'm actually grabbing more paint and literally just placing it right on top. I'm not really blending with the color underneath. Literally just placing it right on top and look, gotta make more. So don't stress out if you have to keep making your shade. It's great practice um, each time that you have to mix your color. All right, and then taking that same color, there's a nice little stripe here. So as we do this stripe on here, you don't wanna go um, horizontal to the ground because there is a bit of an angle. Use the back end of the brush. You wanna go, you wanna kind of follow this line. So it's not a horizontal line, it's at a slight angle. So we're gonna put a stripe, we're gonna start right here, place our brush and then just pull it across. But again, notice that's a bit of that angle that mimics the top of that square. So sometimes it might be easier to kind of come in like this, start at the top. And I actually like to hold the brush at an angle. So I kind of come in, almost put my brush at the angle I need it to, and then move it down. And we're going about in the center, doesn't have to be perfect. And then pulling that stripe right across. And let's see. Nice, I like that my video has about a 30 second delay um, from what I'm actually painting to what you guys see. There we go, so that turned out nice. Okay, so this was our cool shadow side. We will put a few extra little lines in there after it dries. Now this is gonna be a bit warmer because we do have the sun coming in. Not a whole lot warmer and we're still gonna be in similar color schemes, but we're gonna start introducing the yellow into it. All right, so I'm actually gonna just make a new batch. So white, two parts raw sienna to one part white. A little more raw sienna. And then now we're gonna add a little bit of yellow and start with a small amount of yellow and add a little bit more. Easier to work up in small steps like that compared to adding a bunch and trying to backtrack. So just a quick comparison, notice how that's a little bit warmer compared to this feels a little bit cooler, the color we were just using. Um, and if it's not a huge, obvious um, distinct for you right now, that's okay. Um, the more that you paint and start recognizing it, the easier it will be 
um, to kind of see those variations. And even here, kind of placing the color next to each other. And yeah, I was debating whether to add a little bit more yellow or not. Um, so if you're looking at yours and you're not seeing a warmer kind of feel to it, maybe add a touch more yellow to yours. Nice, and I like for this painting, we're basically working from the top of the canvas down and then on the pyramid left to right. I'm usually not that structured with my paintings. All right, and as I said earlier, no matter what you paint, if you change stuff, um, if you paint exactly what's on the video, please email me photos of what you paint. Um, I love seeing those. When I post them on social media, I definitely see more people jumping on the videos and giving painting a try. So you guys are instrumental in encouraging other people to try painting. So share your progress with your community, with your family, and keep on going. Okay, let's, see. let's actually go ahead and do this on this side too. And we're gonna do the face of that pyramid, okay. All right, and I keep forgetting to look for questions. Let's see. All right, oh, we got a bunch of people saying hi to each other. Excellent, excellent. And looks like Ingrid's asking if we can do the Great Pyramid. Um, I'll add that to the demo list for sure, but I'm going to wait so there's a few weeks in between um, since we did the pyramid today. Uh, but I'll definitely add it to there. And if you have a specific pyramid that you want me to... Uh, focus on, uh, let me know. Put that in the chat and I'll put it next to the notes. All right. And again, because I painted uh, or went over my traceable with the Sharpie marker, I can see the black lines through it. So if you did not do that on yours, um, you can use more of looking at the traceable or even looking at the video and hone in that uh, power of observation and just see where it's at on the traceable as well as see where it is on the video. So now we're filling in that front face of the pyramid. And I'm actually just gonna go right over that doorway. And you can see where I had a few places of the blue paint on there, just painted right on top of it. So that is one of the nice aspects of acrylic painting. Okay, and we're gonna go a little bit lighter for this little strip right there. Whoops, didn't mean to transfer something from the end of the brush. So we're gonna add a little bit more white to this mixture. So same thing, perimeter mixing, going a little bit lighter, and let's fill in that whole strip. And that's actually cooler than it needs to be. So I'm gonna add a touch of white to that, or yellow to that. There we go. All right, and as you guys get more and more into painting, um, and we talk about the value scale quite a bit um, on these demos, I think it's, it's a core foundational art skill to learn. And my signature Paint Your Pet class is basically based on your value scale. So when you're ready to kind of paint from your own photograph and paint your pet, paint something that you love, uh, jump over to my online school, Paint with Lovejoy, and check out the Paint Your Pet course a whole new way to look at your pet and realize how much more you love it compared to other things in life. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go a little bit darker here. This is some shadow and then we'll take some of that shadow and do what we did on this side and kind of lay it across our lighter color. So again, since this is kind of warm, I'm gonna take that warm color, I'm just kind of collecting it a little bit more and then we'll add a tiny amount of black to it. And again, as we do this, because we don't want to go as dark as we did on the left-hand side of the pyramid, um, we want just a little bit. We just want to change that color. So again, I just kind of push that excess on there and decent amount on the brush already. We'll see. And I'm just going to mix this little blob. So I do want to go a touch darker than that. Not going dark as this, just a little bit darker than what we were just using. And since we talked about the color theory, let's just do a little test. I need it darker than that. 
I'm going to do another test, and that's a little closer to what I need. Okay. And if you're realizing that your brush, um, the brush strokes keep getting whiter and whiter, take a look at your brush. Do you have a lot of paint buildup where the metal and the bristles meet? If so, wipe off that excess paint, maybe clean it out. And that's going to bring your bristles back together to make those smaller lines, and then go back and pick up your paint. So just a little bit of brush maintenance for you. All right, and basically filling in that last little shadow staircase section. And again, remember to breathe. I'm proud of you for painting. You're doing awesome. Okay, so now we're going to take the same color and on our lines that were on the traceable, we're going to do the same thing. So again, I like to kind of hold that brush sideways. And let's see, let's actually go a bit darker. I want a little more contrast in that. So I'm going to add a little bit more black. There we go. And I'm going right over those lines. All right, and oh, okay. Whew. Freaked out for a minute. I thought maybe uh, we'd list, lost connection like yesterday. So, okay, so let's see. We need, oh, we got to get that stripe on the top. So the same color. And this stripe, you know, we can kind of pick up where we left off on the other one. And again, this one's not going to go horizontal. It's got a slight angle. It's going to match this line right here. So again, I like to kind of hold my brush that it, direction, kind of set up my angle, and then come down to the spot that I need, and then pull it right across. Remember to breathe. Don't hold your breath. All right, and taking kind of a residual what's left on my brush here, I'm just going to put a few little things kind of in the center of, it almost looks like a slide, but I know it's all their, their millions and millions of stairs that they get to stand on or walk up to their altar. And then wipe off that excess paint and then just use that light pressure to push that in there, just give it a bit of a shadow. These are actually a bunch of steps. If you wanted to do a bunch of lines, you could. All right, so now you don't necessarily need to clean the brush. I'm going to grab that black paint by itself. This little doorway right here, we're going to fill in with black. And then not all of these, but just kind of the perimeter of these steps, we're going to go a little bit darker. And my underneath paint is still a touch wet, so there's a little bit of blending happening, but not much. So if that's happening on yours, if it's still wet and you can do your blending, go right ahead and do that. If it's not, I like to actually dry my brush off, wipe off the excess paint, and get off any moisture. And then with a light brush pressure, I just kind of go back to the fresh paint, the black, and super light pressure, I'm just kind of pulling it into that stair um, this kind of lighter color or darker color, the sides of the stairs. That's what I was looking for. And again, just using that light pressure and just giving a hint that we've got a little bit more shadow happening. It may not look so cool two feet in front of your face while you're painting it. Um, but as you step away and look at it from that distance, um, it's starting to make a little bit more sense. Okay. And let's go ahead and take that black on this side right here. This would be a bit of a harsher line. So just going right over that traceable line. And this one we're going to leave a little bit more solid, so I'm not going to blend in. And just for distinction, let's go ahead 
give a line all the way across right there. And if you are kind of liking how that looks and you want to do a black outline on all of it, go right ahead. That gives a bit of a pop art, um, kind of contemporary modern feel to it. And like I said earlier, you have full permission to change and deviate um, from the path. I just want you to paint, just use this as a guideline, um, but make it better than what you see on the video, take it in your own direction. Um, it's just, just awesome. Okay, so, and we're at about the 30 minute mark. We are closing in on the conclusion of the video. So let's get our grass down here. And I'm gonna move back up to a middle flat brush. I'm gonna start with the yellow, because I want a bit more of a spring green, and then add a touch of green. Just like we've been doing all of our mixing, start out with a small amount of your darker pigment as you mix it into your lighter pigment and change the shade to what you want. And the picture that I am referencing, it is pretty flat, um, smooth grass, it looks like, very, very flat. There are a few little trees back here, so we can add that. And once you've got your base, and again, if you're on a stretched canvas, carry this color around the side. And then I like to actually grab a chunk of that direct uh, green, slap it on there, Let's get a little bit right underneath. And then wipe off that brush again. And just like we did in the background, play with just kind of mixing that into the lighter green. And if you want, you can go back to that pointy brush and do little sprigs of grass blades. Um, for the little bit of foliage that's behind here, it's literally behind the pyramid and it doesn't come up too far you know it's kind of a little I guess a second or third step is about where it's at so you do want to be a little careful as you're coming up next to um, the pyramid but I like doing this kind of stabbing method moving my brush a little bit so it's not the exact same uh, direction each time this is also very therapeutic and then grabbing a little bit of that direct green. And then maybe a little touch of yellow. Okay, so a few more things that we're gonna add and then we're just gonna do a few little white highlights on there. And then that brings us into the conclusion of the video today. Okay, so pointy brush. These do not have to be perfectly straight or perfect highlight value, a hint that we've got the sun coming from the right hand side. So pointy brush, that pure white paint. I'm gonna start at the top of the pyramid, just kind of work my way down, and most of them are gonna be on that right hand side. Whoops, just put my palm right in there. Okay, fix that. All right, and again, breathe. Find your point to steady your hand, whether um, it's leaning your elbow or your forearm against the edge of the table, putting your pinky out and using that as your pivot point. And this is a part where a lot of people hold their breath, so exhale. And as you can see, you know, it's not like I'm putting these in an exact place of science. Just kind of slapping it on there. Don't think too much. I would say overthinking is the enemy of creativity. So don't let it get you. And then always be kind to yourself. That's the other uh, kind of tough aspect. Okay, and if you want to put a sun in there, if you want to put daytime stars, if you want birds in the sky, anything you might want, feel free to add and adjust. Um, same with the, any black outlines that you might want, anything. This is it's good structure and not bad for an architectural element in less than 30 minutes. So yeah. um, let me see if there's any other questions. Nice, Denise, glad you like it. Um, nice, we got a new person, Ivana. Thanks for joining us. Cool. 
So I believe tomorrow's painting is a peacock butterfly, and it's the really pretty ones that look like they have the eyes on there. Um, so jump on for that. If you want to see any of the other future demos, uh, scroll to my main page and just scroll down and you can see what's already scheduled. And I am keeping a list for the new ones. So I'll add the Great Pyramid to that. Um, yeah, check out my online school. Be creative. Get your way through the world. Um, more stress relieved and relaxed. So, yeah. All right. Just looking to see if there's any other questions that jumped on. And hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Oops. Sorry for hitting that.